Welcome, I Bowen. So, we are going to have a look at our first lesson in terms of doing the listening actually, okay? So, the very first lesson was discussing about the listening strategies. We are going to have a look at festivals and celebrations. Then, listening listening strategies celebrations Alright, so the pre-listening activity. Match the words with the definition. Okay. End of exams party, royal wedding, Notting Hill Carnival, birthday party, golden wedding anniversary. Okay, so let's have a look at it. May thamai thiyana definition sticker, galapene ka match karan noni. A party to celebrate the anniversary of someone's birth. Aha, kaage hari birth ka ipadima ai ai samarana kota, api mokadda. Ekata kiyana pachane. Birthday party. Okay. So that is a birthday party. West Indian Carnival held in London every August 2nd. Okay. Notting Hill Carnival. It's called the Notting Hill Carnival. The marriage of a king, queen, prince or princess. Gyam kisi ka saadaya ak rajek ke saha rajek ge ko rajina ka ge nattang kumara kumari ek ge. Oana me vivaha utsave ke tapi mokadda kiya ne? Royal wedding kiya la. Raja kiya esa pavatva na vivaha utsave. Royal wedding. Okay, so I mean the real royal weddings, okay? Right, the next one. A celebration of 50 years of marriage. That's nice. Okay. Aurdu panaha kasa the bena ekati indela. E samarana. Vivaha matake ekatapi kienama. Right. 50 years. Aurdu panaha ekati indela. E samarana anniversary ekatapi kienama. Golden wedding anniversary. It's called a golden. Wedding anniversary. A party normally organized by students to celebrate finishing the school year and completing their exams. I think school is not celebrate the school year. It's not the school year. It's not the school year. Term meke avasane to net tang, summoning, aurudde avasane to exams, okkum ivaruna hama, e celebrate karane katapi kiena, end of exams party kiela. End of exams party. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the next one while listening. Listen to the audio and match the speakers with the celebration. Sorry, api dem mukda karan noni. We need to match these with the proper uh, celebrations, right? I mean, don't worry about the capitalization, right? Because it's been capitalized because it's a start in the word box. But you know where you can have a capital letter, okay? All right, so moving on now, what do we have here? We have speaker A, B, C, D, E. Then, we may speakers that take a match karan no ne may celebration ne ka mukhaad dikhiya So, let's listen to the listening and then match it against that. So, this is an extract from um, the Learn English Teens website, which is by British Council. All right. So let's listen the first time. Palavini para hundo tahagenin mukutlian nipa. 
Second time, we will start writing down the answers. And then the third time, we'll just check if we have got our answers correct. Because this is the very first listening that you're doing. Right? So, we will write down the answers. We can double check to see. So, first, listen carefully. All right. So, let's listen to the audio and then see okay, what is speaker is talking about what. Okay, audio and then see okay, which speaker is talking about what. Then, what is the speaker is talking about what. Then, what is Picker again, watch in a mono on the killer, right? Streamers, balloons, can on the DJ, can on the mono on the henna watch in a cake celebration, nekata, dala watch in a henna polo. So listen carefully. Second time, up a jot caramo mono the answers ticker kira, okay? Third time, we will check if the answers are correct. A. It was Nikki's idea, but we all think it's going to be brilliant. As soon as the last exams are finished, we're going to decorate the main hall at school with paper streamers and Chinese lanterns and things. Steve had this idea of projecting photos of everyone onto a wall, like a slideshow. And we've got Joe's brother, who's a professional DJ, coming along. Then there are three different bands lined up to play. Ours is the best, because we've been together the longest. And we've got a great bass player. <coughs> Although I say so myself. <laughs> so, we're on last. It's going to be cool. B. Every year there's a carnival in August in London. You've probably heard of it. The Notting Hill Carnival. So this year me and my friends are going again. We went last year and we had such a fantastic time. It's all Afro-Caribbean with people in amazing costumes and these brilliant steel bands. We don't go in costume, but we do dance a lot. It does get quite crowded, so you have to make sure you stick together. And you have to watch out for pickpockets when there are so many people in the same place. But it's really good fun. It's like London becomes a different country. Even the police dance sometimes. C. We're going to hire a boat for the day and take it up the river. It's my grandparents' golden wedding anniversary, so the whole family is getting together. I'm really looking forward to seeing my cousins again. I haven't seen them for ages. We've got this huge picnic planned with loads of different types of sandwiches and salads and an enormous cake. My dad has borrowed an ancient gramophone player, you know, what they had before CD players and some old records. So as we go up the river, we're going to listen to music from the time my grandparents got married, the swinging 60s. D. Two of my best friends have their birthday in the same week, so some of us have decided to have a surprise party for both of them. One of my friends, Sandra, has a big house and her parents say we can use it. They're going away, luckily. It's at the end of October, so we're going to decorate the house with Halloween things, you know, spiders' webs and spooky things. We're going to make up an excuse to get the birthday girls to come round to the house, say we're going to help Sandra move some stuff or something. Then, as soon as Sandra lets them in, we're going to turn the lights out and jump out at them. We just have to make sure nobody mentions anything on Facebook and gives away the surprise. E. There's a royal wedding in June. One of our princes is getting married, so it's a public holiday. Lots of people are having parties in squares and parks and places, and the people in our street decided to have one too. Well, it's a good excuse to have a party, isn't it? We're all going to take out tables and chairs and put them together in the middle of the road. We're going to stop cars coming through, obviously. We're all going to bring different dishes and share them round. There are quite a lot of different nationalities living on our street, 
people from India, China and different African countries, so the food should be really interesting. It'll be good to get to know more of the neighbours too. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. To find others like it, visit www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English teens. All right, so here you would have understood that they were using different vocabulary, all right, to talk about different celebrations. So about streamers, about photos, right, about um, boat rides, songs, right, lots of vocab. So etika ahagena api dang second time mahanyanava etakota we are going to jot down notes and decide which one is it going to be. So listen carefully. A. It was Nikki's idea, but we all think it's going to be brilliant. As soon as the last exams are finished, we're going to decorate the main hall at school with paper streamers and Chinese lanterns and things. Steve had this idea of projecting photos of everyone onto a wall, like a slideshow. And we've got Joe's brother, who's a professional DJ, coming along. Then there are three different bands lined up to play. Ours is the best because we've been together the longest and we've got a great bass player. <coughs> Although I say so myself. <laughs> so we're on last. It's going to be cool. B. Every year there's a carnival in August in London. You've probably heard of it. The Notting Hill Carnival. So this year me and my friends are going again. We went last year and we had such a fantastic time. It's all Afro-Caribbean with people in amazing costumes and these brilliant steel bands. We don't go in costume, but we do dance a lot. It does get quite crowded, so you have to make sure you stick together. And you have to watch out for pickpockets when there are so many people in the same place. But it's really good fun. It's like London becomes a different country. Even the police dance sometimes. C. We're going to hire a boat for the day and take it up the river. It's my grandparents' golden wedding anniversary, so the whole family is getting together. I'm really looking forward to seeing my cousins again. I haven't seen them for ages. We've got this huge picnic planned with loads of different types of sandwiches and salads and an enormous cake. My dad has borrowed an ancient gramophone player, you know, what they had before CD players and some old records. So as we go up the river, we're going to listen to music from the time my grandparents got married, the swinging 60s. D. Two of my best friends have their birthday in the same week, so some of us have decided to have a surprise party for both of them. One of my friends, Sandra, has a big house and her parents say we can use it. They're going away, luckily. It's at the end of October, so we're going to decorate the house with Halloween things, you know, spiders' webs and spooky things. We're going to make up an excuse to get the birthday girls to come round to the house, say we're going to help Sandra move some stuff or something. Then, as soon as Sandra lets them in, we're going to turn the lights out and jump out at them. We just have to make sure nobody mentions anything on Facebook and gives away the surprise. E. There's a royal wedding in June. One of our princes is getting married, so it's a public holiday. Lots of people are having parties in squares and parks and places, and the people in our street decided to have one too. Well, it's a good excuse to have a party, isn't it? We're all going to take out tables and chairs and put them together in the middle of the road. We're going to stop cars coming through, obviously. We're all going to bring different dishes and share them round. There are quite a lot of different nationalities living on our street. 
people from India, China and different African countries, so the food should be really interesting. It'll be good to get to know more of the neighbours too. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. To find others like it, visit www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English teens. Right. So now last time I've jot down some words here. Mam mukhudh kare ahanagamang uh, notes tika data, right? So these words actually help me to determine what this is about, right? Now let's take for an example. Decorate main hall school DJ photos of each person band. Main hall ki wama samane main hall lakakte ni skole, right? Main hall in school, right? DJ photos, so I think it would be end of party at school. Every year the carnival is held August 2nd. Remember, api pre activities wala match kara me vai thero. Me think August kia ne kati be carnival leke. So, Notting Hill carnival. Hire a boat for my grandmother's golden wedding anniversary. So, they've got an ancient gramophone and they're listening to the um, what? 60s music, right? Swinging music. So that is going to be the golden wedding anniversary. Surprise party at Sandra's place and they're going to make it as a Halloween theme. So that's going to be a surprise birthday. And then the royal wedding which is going to be held in June. Right? Then there is another vachana hagin hitihama. Pre-activity ekat karahama you have an understanding of what they mean and then ahana velavata it's much easier. So I'm going to mark this as a end of school party A. Surprise birthday party is going to be D. Notting Hill Carnival is going to be B. Golden wedding anniversary is going to be C. And the royal wedding is going to be E. Right? So... Let's listen to it one more time to see if you have got these words, right? Tava eka para kahamo, ito koto ogolonte enama idea kak, me vachana tika, tiyanamada, kohomada, me digata match venamada kienika, hariyatama. So let's listen to it one more time. A. It was Nikki's idea, but we all think it's going to be brilliant. As soon as the last exams are finished, we're going to decorate the main hall at school with paper streamers and Chinese lanterns and things. Steve had this idea of projecting photos of everyone onto a wall, like a slideshow. And we've got Joe's brother, who's a professional DJ, coming along. Then there are three different bands lined up to play. Ours is the best, because we've been together the longest. And we've got a great bass player. <coughs> Although I say so myself. <laughs> so, we're on last. It's going to be cool. B. Every year there's a carnival in August in London. You've probably heard of it. The Notting Hill Carnival. So this year me and my friends are going again. We went last year and we had such a fantastic time. It's all Afro-Caribbean with people in amazing costumes and these brilliant steel bands. We don't go in costume, but we do dance a lot. It does get quite crowded, so you have to make sure you stick together. And you have to watch out for pickpockets when there are so many people in the same place. But it's really good fun. It's like London becomes a different country. Even the police dance sometimes. C. We're going to hire a boat for the day and take it up the river. It's my grandparents' golden wedding anniversary, so the whole family is getting together. I'm really looking forward to seeing my cousins again. I haven't seen them for ages. We've got this huge picnic planned with loads of different types of sandwiches and salads and an enormous cake. 
My dad has borrowed an ancient gramophone player, you know, what they had before CD players and some old records. So as we go up the river, we're going to listen to music from the time my grandparents got married, the swinging 60s. D. Two of my best friends have their birthday in the same week, so some of us have decided to have a surprise party for both of them. One of my friends, Sandra, has a big house and her parents say we can use it. They're going away, luckily. It's at the end of October, so we're going to decorate the house with Halloween things, you know, spiders, webs and spooky things. We're going to make up an excuse to get the birthday girls to come round to the house, say we're going to help Sandra move some stuff or something. Then, as soon as Sandra lets them in, we're going to turn the lights out and jump out at them. We just have to make sure nobody mentions anything on Facebook and gives away the surprise. E. There's a royal wedding in June. One of our princes is getting married, so it's a public holiday. Lots of people are having parties in squares and parks and places, and the people in our street decided to have one too. Well, it's a good excuse to have a party, isn't it? We're all going to take out tables and chairs and put them together in the middle of the road. We're going to stop cars coming through, obviously. We're all going to bring different dishes and share them round. There are quite a lot of different nationalities living on our street. People from India, China and different African countries. So the food should be really interesting. It'll be good to get to know more of the neighbours too. Right, so I think there you have matched everything and we've got our answers clearly here, right? So A, end of term, party at school, B, Notting Hill Carnival, C, golden wedding anniversary, D, surprise birthday party, E, royal wedding. All right, so moving on, complete the sentences with the correct speaker. We'll see people dressed in amazing costumes. Mm -hmm. Is going to decorate the venue with Chinese lanterns and have projections on the wall. Is worried about someone on Facebook spoiling the surprise. Is going to be careful of people stealing things. Is going to listen to old-fashioned music played on an old-fashioned machine. Is one of the bands that are playing. Is going to taste food from all over the world. Is going to celebrate with the whole family. Is organizing a party for her two best friends. Is going to make sure there is no traffic on her street. Then happy hundata. Listening eka karana ngapi tum para kehwa. So now we are going to write it from our memory. Mata king lian neano. Okay. I know it's like a post activity, but api liamu eta kota we can kind of while listening mark it. Okay. We'll see people dressed in amazing costumes, right? I think it's going to be um, which speaker? Speaker. B. Okay. Speaker B. We can cut one here. Okay. Is going to decorate the venue using Chinese lanterns and have projections on wall. Okay. I think that is going to be speaker A. So let's have a look at it. We've got to read of speak A. Is worried about someone on Facebook spoiling the surprise that was speaker D. Right. Is going to be careful of people stealing things. So that's again speaker B. Next 
next one is going to listen to old fashioned music. So old fashioned music would be speaker C. So we've got speaker C. Is in one of the bands that are playing speaker A. Is going to taste food from all over the world again. All right, so we were looking at is going to taste um, food from all over the world, and that is going to be speaker E because it was the royal wedding. Is going to celebrate with the whole family. Hamo thekkam celebrate karane which one? Um, so we have to cut off speaker E. Uh, with the whole family, it was going to be grandparents one. Okay, so I'm going to say speaker C. Right. Is organizing a party for her two best friends. Uh -huh. Two best friends surprise birthday, speaker D. So... Get rid of speaker D. Is going to make sure there is no traffic on her street. Speaker E for the royal wedding. Right. So we've used speaker E. Have we used A twice? I think so. A once. Yeah, we've used A twice. So there we go, we have listened to the recording and we have got these answers. Api recording ka tawa ekka para kahala balamu hariyatama metika galapena vada kiyala so that we can tick the answers and see if they are correct. Okay? A. It was Nikki's idea, but we all think it's going to be brilliant. As soon as the last exams are finished, we're going to decorate the main hall at school with paper streamers and Chinese lanterns and things. Steve had this idea of projecting photos of everyone onto a wall, like a slideshow. And we've got Joe's brother, who's a professional DJ, coming along. Then there are three different bands lined up to play. Ours is the best, because we've been together the longest. And we've got a great bass player. <coughs> Although I say so myself. <laughs> so, we're on last. It's going to be cool. B. Every year there's a carnival in August in London. You've probably heard of it. The Notting Hill Carnival. So this year me and my friends are going again. We went last year and we had such a fantastic time. It's all Afro-Caribbean with people in amazing costumes and these brilliant steel bands. We don't go in costume, but we do dance a lot. It does get quite crowded, so you have to make sure you stick together. And you have to watch out for pickpockets when there are so many people in the same place. But it's really good fun. It's like London becomes a different country. Even the police dance sometimes. C. We're going to hire a boat for the day and take it up the river. It's my grandparents' golden wedding anniversary, so the whole family is getting together. I'm really looking forward to seeing my cousins again. I haven't seen them for ages. We've got this huge picnic planned with loads of different types of sandwiches and salads and an enormous cake. My dad has borrowed an ancient gramophone player, you know, what they had before CD players and some old records. So as we go up the river, we're going to listen to music from the time my grandparents got married, the swinging 60s. D. Two of my best friends have their birthday in the same week, so some of us have decided to have a surprise party for both of them. One of my friends, Sandra, has a big house and her parents say we can use it. They're going away, luckily. 
It's at the end of October, so we're going to decorate the house with Halloween things, you know, spiders, webs and spooky things. We're going to make up an excuse to get the birthday girls to come round to the house. Say we're going to help Sandra move some stuff or something. Then, as soon as Sandra lets them in, we're going to turn the lights out and jump out at them. We just have to make sure nobody mentions anything on Facebook and gives away the surprise. E. There's a royal wedding in June. One of our princes is getting married, so it's a public holiday. Lots of people are having parties in squares and parks and places, and the people in our street decided to have one too. Well, it's a good excuse to have a party, isn't it? We're all going to take out tables and chairs and put them together in the middle of the road. We're going to stop cars coming through, obviously. We're all going to bring different dishes and share them round. There are quite a lot of different nationalities living on our street. People from India, China and different African countries. So the food should be really interesting. It'll be good to get to know more of the neighbours too. Right, so no traffic was told before that right at the end. Before she spoke about the food, she was speaking about where there's not going to be traffic and they're going to put all the tables and chairs to sit down. All right. Okay, so the next listening, we are going to listen to a journalist give a detailed description of a festival and answer the following questions right then journalist kenek eka festival ekak gana details wagayak denawa api eka hagen indala uttara liyan one so first time we are just going to listen carefully second time we will answer these questions so how many times am i going to play the audio twice first time listen second time write the answers all right, so let's listen to the audio uh, first time, right? And don't write anything. Second time, we'll jot down the answers. Hari, palaveni para hagini na devani para api answers diemo. It's March. I'm in Valencia, Spain's third largest city, with my new friend Jose. It's one o'clock in the morning. All around us, fireworks are going off, and the streets are full of noisy people. Welcome to Las Payas, Jose smiles. You're going to see that Valencians really know how to put on a good party. Seven hours later, I understand what he meant. Las Payas, Valencia's famous festival, takes place every March and goes on for a week. It takes a whole year to organize and everybody joins in the preparations. The city is alive and buzzing all week, but like all good parties, it is at night when people really get down to some serious celebrating. The tradition of Las Fallas began in the 18th century. At that time, craftsmen used wooden candelabra to lighten up their workshops. To celebrate the end of winter, they burnt their candelabra on bonfires and had a party. Later, they made the candelabra into lifelike statues and then dress them up to look like well-known but unpopular local characters. Nowadays, the lifelike statues are made of cardboard. Some of them are over 30 metres high and are worth 200,000 euros. But they all go up in flames before the end of the festival. The Valentians like their guests to enjoy themselves, but after only one hour's sleep it's difficult to keep up with them. Nobody's allowed to sleep during Las Fallas. A brass band passes through the streets in the morning and wakes everyone up. For many of the locals, the highlight of the festival is the flower parade, a procession of 200,000 girls and boys wearing traditional dress march into the city centre, bringing flowers to decorate the statue of the Virgin Mary. The festival reaches its climax on the 19th of March, a public holiday and St. Joseph's Day. This is the night when the cardboard statues are burnt. Everybody looks forward to midnight, 
firecrackers go off every second or two and midnight passes in a shower of explosions. The last statue burns down and the party is over. Well, almost. The bars fill up and people carry on eating and drinking until the early hours of the morning. I have no idea how they keep it up. So I say goodbye to Jose as he heads for the next bar. It will take me weeks to get over it, but I've had the time of my life. Right, so let's listen to it the second time, okay? It's March. I'm in Valencia, Spain's third largest city, with my new friend Jose. It's one o'clock in the morning. All around us fireworks are going off and the streets are full of noisy people. Now this time I want you to do it on your own, right? So before you do that, you should be able to identify what are the key words, right? When does the festival take place? Cover that at the when. How long does it go for? What do we know about its history? history right? And how do people celebrate this festival? How does the festival end, right? So these are the key words. How festival end, how people celebrate, right? And about, right. So after you've marked the keywords now, let's listen from there onwards, right? Then up the keywords mark, right? And the streets are full of noisy people. Welcome to Las Fallas, Jose smiles. You're going to see that Valencians really know how to put on a good party. Seven hours later, I understand what he meant. Las Fallas, Valencia's famous festival, takes place every March and goes on for a week. It takes a whole year to organise and everybody joins in the preparations. The city is alive and buzzing all week, but like all good parties, it is at night when people really get down to some serious celebrating. The tradition of Las Fallas began in the 18th century. At that time, craftsmen used wooden candelabra to lighten up their workshops. To celebrate the end of winter, they burnt their candelabra on bonfires and had a party. Later, they made the candelabra into lifelike statues and then dressed them up to look like well-known but unpopular local characters. Nowadays, the lifelike statues are made of cardboard. Some of them are over 30 metres high and are worth 200,000 euros. But they all go up in flames before the end of the festival. The Valentians like their guests to enjoy themselves, but after only one hour's sleep, it's difficult to keep up with them. Nobody's allowed to sleep during Las Fallas. A brass band passes through the streets in the morning and wakes everyone up. For many of the locals, the highlight of the festival is the flower parade, a procession of 200,000 girls and boys wearing traditional dress march into the city centre, bringing flowers to decorate the statue of the Virgin Mary. The festival reaches its climax on the 19th of March, a public holiday and St. Joseph's Day. This is the night when the cardboard statues are burnt. Everybody looks forward to midnight. Firecrackers go off every second or two and midnight passes in a shower of explosions. The last statue burns down and the party is over. Well, almost. The bars fill up and people carry on eating and drinking until the early hours of the morning. I have no idea how they keep it up. So I say goodbye to Jose as he heads for the next bar. It will take me weeks to get over it, but I've had the time of my life. Right, so I hope you have written the answers. So this one should take kudaukara and then I let you write the difficult ones on your own, right? Here are the answers. So it takes place in March. If you have just written March, so it's fine. And then one week. It began in the 18th century, okay? 
and craftsmen used to light up their workshops with wooden candela candelabras, right, on bon bonfires and had a big party, right. Later in time, they made lifelike statues and dressed them up to look like well-known unpopular characters. So this is taken from the audio. Audio ekin matamai gatte. Okay. And then it talks about how they celebrate. So they put up fireworks, right? Brass bands. Let me just correct this walkthrough. The streets every morning to ensure that everyone is awake, right? And they can't really sleep. And they have lifelike statues and they have parties. And the festival ends when the last statue has really burnt out. So I hope making chutta kari ogolonta, I will let the Anang answers, you're doing good, right? For a start. Okay. Now, the next one. Do you have any celebrations planned? We're looking at a post-listening activity. So this is like a discussion one that I would do in a typical lesson. Do you have any celebrations planned? Okula Munahari celebrations plan kala the Birthday party eka, anniversary eka, right? What are you celebrating? What are you going to do? Thama ge monada celebrate karane. I celebrate my wedding anniversary. I celebrate my birthday, right? Um, what are you going to do? And for those celebrations, what will you do? What are you going to do? So that is something for you to think about and jot it down if you want to. Or you could do it as a speaking activity. Now, moving on into practice question two, unusual festivals. Match the two parts of the phrase to make common festival activities. Mm -hmm. Follow, cook and eat, watch. So what would you watch? You would watch a firework display. Oops, okay. So we could say a firework display. You could cook and eat special food. You could also watch a competition. Um, you sh could follow ancient traditions. Right? So these are some of the phrases that you could use to make them common, right? Follow ancient traditions, cook and eat special food, watch a firework display, watch a competition. All right, take part in A, okay? So this could go also with a competition. You can take part in a competition. You could watch a competition on television, but you could actually take part in a competition. You could um, decorate your house or street. You could dress up as a special character. Right, so we've matched them against each other, right? Um, follow ancient traditions. Cook and eat special food. Apita balan na pulo firework display ka TV ke balan ang apita TV ke yana competition ka balan na pulo. Natang we can actually take part in a competition. We can decorate. Ape gedera natang street ka apita decorate karan na pulo sarasan na pulo ang dress up. Apita nda gan na pulo ang special character ka kaitiyeta, right? Okay. 
while listening. Listen to the audio about unusual British festivals and state whether the following statements are true or false. Okay, so here we have six statements. So we are going to listen to it three times. I would listen to it the first time. Don't write anything. Second and third time you can mark the answers. All right. It in Palaveni para ahaganin mukut clean nipa. Devani para tungani para audio kyanakota. You can mark your answers. Right. So let's listen to the audio. I don't know. Oh, I'm, I can't, and I haven't done it in. Hello. I'm going to talk about British festivals. I'm sure you've heard about the Notting Hill Carnival in London. Yeah. <laughs> and the Edinburgh Festival. But today, we're going to look at a lot more that you might not know about. Actually, a lot of these are not exactly festivals, but strange races or competitions. Some of them are ancient and some are modern. So, let's start in January in the north of Scotland with the burning of the clavy. This is a whisky barrel which is set alight, then carried through the streets as a bonfire. It's an ancient tradition which always takes place on the 11th of January, the first day of the year, according to an older form of the calendar. The bonfire brings good luck for the coming year, and people used to keep bits of burnt wood as protection against evil spirits. At the end of January, even further north, in the Shetland Islands, there's another fire festival, the Up Helly Ah. This seems like an ancient festival, but has actually only been going for about 130 years. Well, it is fairly old, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> People carry firelit torches and a Viking boat through the streets, then set fire to the boat. There's lots of dancing. It's good fun. Now, to the north of England. On Shrove Tuesday in February, otherwise known as Pancake Day, a special pancake bell is rung in Scarborough. Everyone goes down to the road next to the beach where they skip. Yep, they jump over long ropes, up to 15 people to one rope. Whoa! And they have pancake races. This is quite common in the UK, running with a frying pan and tossing a pancake at the same time. <laughs> Another kind of race takes place in spring. Cheese rolling. In Gloucestershire... In the southwest of England, round cheeses in round boxes are sent rolling down a hill, and people run after them and try and catch them. The hill is very steep, so people often fall over. If you take part in this, you need to be very fit and wear your oldest jeans. Nowadays, this strange custom attracts visitors from all over the world, but the people from the local village are usually the ones who catch the cheese. <laughs> From people racing to animals. Very tiny animals. World Championship snail racing takes place in a village in Norfolk. <laughs> what? <laughs> the snails have to race from an inner circle to an outer circle, and the winner gets a lot of lettuce. There's a party and barbecue for the snail owners and observers. This custom began in the 1960s, after a local man saw something similar in France. In the UK, we don't eat snails, by the way. More fun, in my opinion, are the onion-eating contests. Also in Gloucestershire, a race to finish eating a raw onion and the Black Pudding Throwing Championship in Lancashire. Black puddings are like big sausages made mainly from dry blood. Contestants bowl three black puddings each at 21 Yorkshire puddings set on a six metre platform. The winner is the one who knocks down the most. <laughs> Another fun contest takes place in September at the Egremont Crab Fair in Cumbria, in the north of England. The World Gurning Championship is a competition to pull the ugliest face. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but this is an ancient British tradition and the crab fair itself dates back to 1267. <laughs> the man who won the title of best Gurner the most in recent years 
had all his teeth taken out so he could make terrible faces more easily. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, let's go back to the south of England. In Brighton, there's a Burning the Clocks festival to celebrate the winter solstice on December 21st. This custom started 20 years ago and is very popular. People make clock lanterns and time-themed figures of paper and wood, then walk through the town to the beach, where the sculptures are set on fire and there's a massive firework display. (laughs) So, that's just a taste of a few of our old and more modern traditions. Would you like to take part in any of them? (laughs) Right, so you've obviously listened to the audio, right? And I'm sure you've picked up on the answers. But I want you to listen now and actually mark the answers. Right? They are going to ask you to ask you to ask you to ask you to ask true the false or true the false. So, you have to ask you to second time and third time to ask you to ask you to But before I go there, I'd like to mark the key words with you. Many of these festivals are actually races or competitions. Many races or competitions. And then this specific festival brings good luck for the new year. Good luck, new year. Okay. Tuesday in Scarborough, dance with ropes. Trees rolling involves running away from a big round cheese. Okay. Involves running away big round cheese. Snail racing started UK. The competition to pull the ugliest face is an old tradition. Competition, pull ugliest face, old tradition. The burning of the clocks festival marks the summer. Marks the summer. The burning of the clocks festival ends with people throwing water. Hurry. Then, we keywords underline the and it's second time we will put the I don't know. Hello. I'm going to talk about British festivals. I'm sure you've heard about the Notting Hill Carnival in London. Yeah. <laughs> and the Edinburgh Festival. But today, we're going to look at a lot more that you might not know about. Actually, a lot of these are not exactly festivals but strange races or competitions. Some of them are ancient and some are modern. So, let's start in January in the north of Scotland with the burning of the clavy. This is a whisky barrel which is set alight, then carried through the streets as a bonfire. It's an ancient tradition which always takes place on the 11th of January, the first day of the year, according to an older form of the calendar. The bonfire brings good luck for the coming year and people used to keep bits of burnt wood as protection against evil spirits. At the end of January, even further north, in the Shetland Islands, there's another fire festival, the Up Helly Air. This seems like an ancient festival, but has actually only been going for about 130 years. Well, it is fairly old, I suppose. <laughs> People carry firelit torches and a Viking boat through the streets, then set fire to the boat. There's lots of dancing. It's good fun. Now, to the north of England. On Shrove Tuesday in February, otherwise known as Pancake Day, a special pancake bell is rung in Scarborough. Everyone goes down to the road next to the beach where they skip. Yep, they jump over long ropes, up to 15 people to one rope. Whoa! And they have pancake races. This is quite common in the UK, running with a frying pan and tossing a pancake at the same time. (laughs) Another kind of race takes place in spring, cheese rolling. In Gloucestershire, in the southwest of England, round cheeses in round boxes are sent rolling down a hill and people run after them and try and catch them. The hill is very steep, so people often fall over. If you take part in this, you need to be very fit and wear your oldest jeans. Nowadays, this strange custom attracts visitors from all over the world. 
but the people from the local village are usually the ones who catch the cheese. Oh. <laughs> from people racing to animals, very tiny animals. World Championship snail racing takes place in a village in Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> the snails have to race from an inner circle to an outer circle, and the winner gets a lot of lettuce. There's a party and barbecue for the snail owners and observers. This custom began in the 1960s after a local man saw something similar in France. In the UK, we don't eat snails, by the way. More fun, in my opinion, are the onion eating contests. Also in Gloucestershire, a race to finish eating a raw onion, and the Black Pudding Throwing Championship in Lancashire. Black puddings are like big sausages, made mainly from dry blood. Contestants bowl three black puddings each at 21 Yorkshire puddings set on a six-metre platform. The winner is the one who knocks down the most. <laughs> Another fun contest takes place in September, at the Egremont Crab Fair in Cumbria, in the north of England. The World Gurning Championship is a competition to pull the ugliest face. Wow. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but this is an ancient British tradition, and the Crab Fair itself dates back to 1267. <laughs> the man who won the title of best gurner the most in recent years had all his teeth taken out, so he could make terrible faces more easily. <laughs> Finally, let's go back to the south of England. In Brighton, there's a Burning the Clocks festival to celebrate the winter solstice on December 21st. This custom started 20 years ago and is very popular. People make clock lanterns and time-themed figures of paper and wood, then walk through the town to the beach where the sculptures are set on fire and there's a massive firework display. Oh! <laughs> so, that's just a taste of a few of our old and more modern traditions. Would you like to take part in any of them? <laughs> right, so moving on with this, right, um, here I have put down the answers and some things where it shows that it is true or why it is false, right? Now, Miki Kianoa, actually, and they say, okay, actually, not to for this, but for races and competitions. So that is true. And this specific festival talks around with whiskey, right? And it does bring good luck. It's celebrated actually um, to bring in good luck, which is true again. So this one, they don't dance with ropes, but they skip along with the ropes, right? So it is false. Um, and cheese involves running away with round cheese. It doesn't really talk about big. If that was not given, it would be not given, but here, because it's not there, false. Snail racing started in the UK, no. It said that after man seeing the same thing in France. So it wasn't started in the UK, false. But this competition was to pull the ugliest face in an old tradition, yes. Um, but it was to mark the winter, right, not the summer. And it ends with a firework display and not people throwing water. So that is also false, okay. Tungani para mample karan nang, mi switch kaat me uttaratika balagan, I will play it, okay so that you can listen to it. No, I don't know. Oh, I'm, I can't, and I haven't done it in uh, Hello. I'm going to talk about British festivals. I'm sure you've heard about the Notting Hill Carnival in London. Yeah. <laughs> and the Edinburgh Festival. But today, we're going to look at a lot more that you might not know about. Actually, a lot of these are not exactly festivals, but strange races or competitions. Some of them are ancient, and some are modern. So, let's start in January in the north of Scotland with the burning of the clavy. This is a whiskey barrel which is set alight, then carried through the streets as a bonfire. It's an ancient tradition which always takes place on the 11th of January, the first day of the year, according to an older form of the calendar. 
The bonfire brings good luck for the coming year, and people used to keep bits of burnt wood as protection against evil spirits. At the end of January, even further north, in the Shetland Islands, there's another fire festival, the Up Heli A. This seems like an ancient festival, but has actually only been going for about 130 years. Well, it is fairly old, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> People carry firelit torches and a Viking boat through the streets, then set fire to the boat. There's lots of dancing. It's good fun. Now, to the north of England. On Shrove Tuesday in February, otherwise known as Pancake Day, a special pancake bell is rung in Scarborough. Everyone goes down to the road next to the beach where they skip. Yep, they jump over long ropes, up to 15 people to one rope. Whoa! And they have pancake races. This is quite common in the UK, running with a frying pan and tossing a pancake at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Another kind of race takes place in spring, cheese rolling. In Gloucestershire, in the southwest of England, round cheeses in round boxes are sent rolling down a hill and people run after them and try and catch them. The hill is very steep, so people often fall over. If you take part in this, you need to be very fit and wear your oldest jeans. Nowadays, this strange custom attracts visitors from all over the world. But the people from the local village are usually the ones who catch the cheese. <laughs> from people racing to animals. Very tiny animals. World Championship snail racing takes place in a village in Norfolk. What? <laughs> the snails have to race from an inner circle to an outer circle. And the winner gets a lot of lettuce. There's a party and barbecue for the snail owners and observers. This custom began in the 1960s after a local man saw something similar in France. In the UK, we don't eat snails, by the way. More fun, in my opinion, are the onion eating contests. Also in Gloucestershire, a race to finish eating a raw onion and the black pudding throwing championship in Lancashire. Black puddings are like big sausages, made mainly from dry blood. Contestants bowl three black puddings each at 21 Yorkshire puddings set on a six metre platform. The winner is the one who knocks down the most. <laughs> Another fun contest takes place in September at the Egremont Crab Fair in Cumbria, in the north of England. The World Gurning Championship is a competition to pull the ugliest face. Wow! <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but this is an ancient British tradition, and the crab fair itself dates back to 1267. <laughs> the man who won the title of best gurner the most in recent years had all his teeth taken out so he could make terrible faces more easily. <laughs> Finally, Let's go back to the south of England. In Brighton, there's a Burning the Clocks festival to celebrate the winter solstice on December 21st. This custom started 20 years ago and is very popular. People make clock lanterns and time-themed figures of paper and wood, then walk through the town to the beach, where the sculptures are set on fire and there's a massive firework display. Oh! <laughs> so... That's just a taste of a few of our old and more modern traditions. Would you like to take part in any of them? <laughs> so you would have completed it and checked the answers against mine. All right. All right. So let's look at the next set of questions. Choose the correct option to complete the sentence. Then, api ahal na gamang audio eka hari uttere api select karan none. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'll do one with you and then next you'll have to do the answers on your own. I'm only going to play the audio once. Right? Okay. So let's listen to the audio once. No, I don't know. Oh, I'm, I can't, and I haven't done it. Anymore. Hello. I'm going to talk about British festivals. I'm sure you've heard about the Notting Hill Carnival in London. Yeah. <laughs> a 
and the Edinburgh Festival. But today, we're going to look at a lot more that you might not know about. Actually, a lot of these are not exactly festivals, but strange races or competitions. Some of them are ancient and some are modern. So, let's start in January in the north of Scotland with the burning of the clavy. This is a whisky barrel which is set alight, then carried through the streets as a bonfire. It's an ancient tradition which always takes place on the 11th of January, the first day of the year, according to an older form of the calendar. The bonfire brings good luck for the coming year, and people used to keep bits of burnt wood as protection against evil spirits. At the end of January, even further north, in the Shetland Islands, there's another fire festival, the Up Heli A. This seems like an ancient festival, but has actually only been going for about 130 years. Well, it is fairly old, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> People carry firelit torches and a Viking boat through the streets, then set fire to the boat. There's lots of dancing. It's good fun. Now, to the north of England. On Shrove Tuesday in February, otherwise known as Pancake Day, a special pancake bell is rung in Scarborough. Everyone goes down to the road next to the beach where they skip. Yep, they jump over long ropes, up to 15 people to one rope. Whoa! And they have pancake races. This is quite common in the UK, running with a frying pan and tossing a pancake at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Another kind of race takes place in spring, cheese rolling. In Gloucestershire, in the southwest of England, round cheeses in round boxes are sent rolling down a hill and people run after them and try and catch them. The hill is very steep, so people often fall over. If you take part in this, you need to be very fit and wear your oldest jeans. Nowadays, this strange custom attracts visitors from all over the world. But the people from the local village are usually the ones who catch the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> from people racing to animals. Very tiny animals. World Championship snail racing takes place in a village in Norfolk. <laughs> what? <laughs> the snails have to race from an inner circle to an outer circle. And the winner gets a lot of lettuce. There's a party and barbecue for the snail owners and observers. This custom began in the 1960s after a local man saw something similar in France. In the UK, we don't eat snails, by the way. More fun, in my opinion, are the onion eating contests. Also in Gloucestershire, a race to finish eating a raw onion and the black pudding throwing championship in Lancashire. Black puddings are like big sausages, made mainly from dry blood. Contestants bowl three black puddings each at 21 Yorkshire puddings set on a six metre platform. The winner is the one who knocks down the most. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun contest takes place in September at the Egremont Crab Fair in Cumbria, in the north of England. The World Gurning Championship is a competition to pull the ugliest face. Wow! <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but this is an ancient British tradition, and the crab fair itself dates back to 1267. <laughs> the man who won the title of best gurner the most in recent years had all his teeth taken out so he could make terrible faces more easily. <laughs> Finally, let's go back to the south of England. In Brighton, there's a Burning the Clocks festival to celebrate the winter solstice on December 21st. This custom started 20 years ago and is very popular. People make clock lanterns and time-themed figures of paper and wood, then walk through the town to the beach, where the sculptures are set on fire and there's a massive firework display. Oh! <laughs> so, that's just a taste of a few of our old and more modern traditions. Would you like to take part in any of them? <laughs> right, so here you have to learn to listen to the pronunciation carefully. To 20 
200 okay then mam mula tike answers tika ogolo teka kara kiyala denna okay so they use burnt wood so whiskey is the answer whiskey container right and then they obviously take the viking boat and they set the boat on fire okay then here um, during a pancake race, what do you have to do? Ikman to the one known while tossing the pancake in a pan, right? And um, nowadays, people who win the cheese rolling competition say, in the audio, they say, um, who catch most amount of cheese are the locals. Local means the people from the village, okay? Five, six, seven, and eight. Let's have a look at your answers. So they've been given lettuce, the snails who win, bowling, had all his teeth removed and 20 years old. Hadi? Then ticker ticker, you're getting used to it, right? The mama kiela then a kota skill like a liana kota, you also get used to it so that later on I just play it and you will look out for the answers, right? So moving on, next activity. We are going to watch a video about unusual festivals and select the appropriate answers. Hari? Then we will do the video and answers to select the answers. The question is, 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 right? So what will I learn in this activity? You learn about objectives, right? Who is the big sister, Robin or Cat? What is she afraid of? Aha, Baya Monoagalanda, what is she afraid of? Okay. La Tomatina, okay. Um, a festival, where is this festival about tomatoes? Okay. How did he feel when he fell off? Was he happy, free, furious? Angry, furious, it was more than angry. The Hindu holy festival celebrates the coming of Mona season. People celebrate turning of the bones festival in Madagascar with corpses. Is it true or false, right? So turning the bones in Madagascar. The haunting of Bones Festival takes place every Aurudugana Kata Sarayak. People in Thailand have a festival for which of the animals, right? Let's listen. Rather we watch it and then come back and answer. Like a post uh, listening activity Vageunata um, for you actually um, you can Listen or rather watch it and then, you know, answer the questions. It will be easy. Okay, right. Let's watch the video. Balamuapi video eka isela. Who has a passion for world travel. So who does she want to be like? Her big sister, Robin. So the answer is going to be Robin. Okay. Now, if we have a look at the next question. What is she afraid of? Hare? Mom, pause. Kara 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 na mao. Gulo ito kota answer ko gulo nta balan na puluang na vidya right? However, Kat is hesitant to get on the plane as she has never flown before. So what is she hesitant? She's hesitant to get on a plane, right? Okay. So metra thi ani mukada. What is she afraid of? She's afraid of planes. Okay. Right. So next we have the four questions, right? About the La Tomato no Festival, where is it actually, right? And how did he feel when he fell off? And about the Hindu Holy Festival, what does it celebrate? The coming of which season? Okay, so let's have a look at the remaining bit of the video, right? It in the Ilanga Tika Balamu, may questions ticket answers, right? Okay, so it's talking about a specific festival. Robin wishes Kat could join her on an adventure. She decides to encourage her by mentioning some unusual festival celebrated around the world. Where is this festival? It's in 
Spain. Okay. How does he feel when he fell off? Now let's listen more. In tomato flight. It all began in 1945 when a participant fell off a float during a local parade. He landed next to a produce stand and was so furious. So how did he feel when he fell off? Was he happy? Satatuna the na he was. What was the word? He was furious. Last question we are having a look at the Hindu holy festival, okay? From that day, La Tomatina was born. Cat thinks this sounds like a blast. Robin has, for those who like to get messy, there is the Hindu holy festival in India to celebrate the coming of spring. Wow. To celebrate the coming of which season? Spring, okay? Now let's move to the next slide, okay? And metana tiyanawa antima questions thuna. Right? Make it a mighty ene antimum questions sooner. I've underlined the keywords. Let's look at the video. Friends, strangers, young and old are all fair game for the massive crowd throwing colored dye in the streets to signify the sharing of love. Not for the faint hearted is the turning of bones festival for Mariana celebrated in Madagascar. So is it true? Yes, it is true, right? So the Bones Festival in Madagascar is celebrated with the corpses. It is true. We get the tamai. Ilangeka, the haunting of Bones Festival takes place in every aurudu kiyakata saraya. The locals believe that the spirits of the recently deceased still linger and that they too like a good party. Robin and Kat think this is so terrifying that it is only celebrated every seven years. Okay, seven years. Cat is surprised to hear that in Lockwood, Thailand. So that was seven years and the last one about Thailand, okay? They have a huge buffet for thousands of hungry monkeys with 4,000 kilos of fruit, vegetables and cake up for grabs. Tourists can take photos at their own risk. Cat is excited and realizes that there is a huge world of amazing cultures for them to explore together. She goes with her sister on her next trip to Spain and might even join in dancing with corpses one day. Right, so all credits go to the original author and the website. And here are your questions, okay? Then, mama answers to discuss kara o golote ke anaga mama. So, hopefully, you have underlined it in case you want to go through it. Um, big sister's name, Robin. What was she afraid of? Planes. May uh, festival legate in Spain, Vala. He was very furious. And we celebrate spring. Um, this is true. Bones happens every seven years and it's for the monkeys. Now, how does she feel at the end of the video? What do you think? How does she feel? She feels amazed about the different cultures, right? She is amazed about the different cultures, right? And they say she might even actually go to celebrate that haunting kind of festival, which is celebrated every seven years. We don't know. All right. Okay. So your post-listening activity, which of these traditions would you like to take part in? Thamang Kamati Mona traditions will take part karana the may api kata karapuevai. Do they remind you of any other festivals you know about? E ahapo unusual leva monahari mata karana the ogolonta ogoludan festival leka kena. Right? So you can write something, okay, or you can do a little speaking activity and you could pop up the answers in the comment box, right? All right, um, so moving on into the next one, practice question three. So we're going to do a pre-listening. Can you guess what the recording is about? What information do you expect to find out by listening to it? Uh -huh. Mukha ganada 
අපි අහන්න යන්නේ පහන් පත්තු කරලා තියෙනවා colors වලට දාලා තියෙනවා ඒ මත පහනක් තියලා තියෙනවා what do you think the festival is okay this is a famous festival which i feel is um diwali right uh, but Let's see if our guess is correct. So, Diwali gana hana tiyane wa tamai apya hana yane. So, maybe the history, um, the dates, how people celebrated food, right? Um, different practices that they do during this festive time or celebration time. While listening, watch the video and answer the questions below. How many days... the diwali festival last for okay so how many days does the diwali festival last for okay days last for true or false diwali takes place after the monsoon rains have finished okay let's see is it true or false or the video doesn't say now here introduced a new one video doesn't say In your IELTS test, we say it's not given, right? Next one. The best time to visit the temples during Diwali is late in the day. Again, true or false or not given. Diwali is the Indian equivalent of which Christian festival, of which Christian one? Is it Thanksgiving, Easter or Christmas? What do neighbors share with each other during this time? Pumpkins, food, and treats or turkey. What do Hindus decorate their houses with during Diwali? Okay. What's a decoration? What? Diwali. What time of the year does Diwali take place? What time take place? Which of these things is not a Diwali tradition? Decorating the doorways, letting off fireworks, eating chocolate eggs. Okay? Right. So we are not going to do part B. We'll first do part A. Right? Okay. So let's listen to the video or rather watch the video and answer the questions. So right, let us watch the video, right? And then we'll have a look at the answers. All right. Hare, then uttara tika dagane ana. So you have to do it on your own, okay? And then I will discuss the answers with you. Okay? Here you go. Should you like, you know, the best time to visit is it late? I don't think so. So I would say this is false for an example, okay? And this one they said is similar to Christmas. So among Avidiyata Uttaratika Liyan, but you should listen to it. In case you want to go and listen to it, please go back and listen to it, okay? So they share food and treats. Do they share pumpkin? No, right? Pataka share karnu adha ne, right? Turkey? No, but they said very specifically food and treats. Okay, so garlic, no garlands, yes. Okay, all right, so let's have a look at the answers. So Diwali lasts for about five days, right? And it's false because monsoon begins after Diwali has ended. Go back and listen to it. The next one also statement is false because the best time to visit is in the Early time of the day. Can you see what we are talking about? Make a monkey walk Christmas world to some man. I kill him. And they give sweet plates. Okay. So treats and other types of food. People in India decorate their homes with garlands. Right. And Diwali takes place in late fall. Can you see what we are talking about? Late fall. Autumn. Can you see what? Indian people let off fireworks and decorate their doorways with colored sand patterns during Diwali. Okay? Right. All right. So moving on into the next question. Watch the video and answer the questions below. Watch the video and answer the questions below. So before we have a look at the video, let's have a look at the questions. 
Which of these words has the same or similar meaning to the word overwhelmed? Okay. Then overwhelmed, you have to make sure that you have a look at the meaning from the dictionary. Okay. Which of these words has the same meaning to the word commemorate? Alright, so moving on into the next question, we're going to watch a video and answer the questions below, right? So which of these words have the same meaning as overwhelmed, commemorate, then we have fall, fragrant, outfit, packed and vendor, right? So what you need to do is listen carefully to these words and then think what is the synonym? What does it mean in that context? What is the synonym for each of the words, right? Iti me vachana valta samana vachana tamai api hoya annone. Ahagene inna video eka balla gamang. E vachana valta galapena context teke theruma mukhadda. Kiya neke tamai api metaning thora annone, right? All right, so let's watch the video. And while watching, let's try to pick up on the meanings, right? All right, so let's watch it. So the first one is overwhelmed and the next one is commemorate. So you can see overwhelmed, commemorate, right? At any time of year, a visitor to India can be overwhelmed by its beauty and color. Overwhelmed by its beauty and color. So what can you say? Overwhelmed, overcome, overjoyed, overdone, overwhelmed means overjoyed by the beauty and color during that time, right? So commemorates, right? Commemorates means marks. It's not memorial, it's not a memory, but it marks. It's something like Christmas for the Christians, right? Okay, so in the next words, fall, fragrant, and outfit, all right? Now, what we'll have a look at is, is the meanings. Because we finished the vocab, right? So here, overwhelmed is overjoyed. Commemorate is mark. Fall is autumn. Fragrant is scented. Scented again, so on the thing, or scent. So on that. Outfit is suit, or what we wear. And though, okay. Packed is, you can get squashed, busy, crushed. Packed means you're kind of squashed, okay? Could be kind count editing and You could kind of get squashed, okay? Vendor is a trader, person who sells. Now, in case you want the definitions, right? Um, I have put it up for you. Answer katama tarava explanation nekak. Overcome is a word that can be described to use how we feel when our senses are being bombarded. Bombarded. Overcome. We can't really overcome that. Overjoyed is you're very happy. Overdone is when we use to describe things that has been repeated many times. The word mark is something that we can use to talk about remembering holidays, lives and important dates. A memorial is an object, a noun, that is made to remember someone or an event. A memory is something we remember and it is a noun. Fall is the season before winter, that's autumn in British English, has the same meaning as the word fall in American English. There are four seasons of the year, right? Winter, summer, spring and autumn and autumn is one of those, right? Temperature is word that we use to measure the heat. Fragrant and scented are words that have similar meaning, right? 
A suit is a set of matching clothes. Um, it has a similar meaning to the word outfit. Fashion is a popular trend of clothing. Wardrobe is a piece of furniture where we keep our clothes. We often describe places that are full of people being busy. So squashed is a word we use to describe when things are packed together. Um, crushed is a word we use to describe when things are packed right a trader noun kiyane ekata thamai we say a trader right a vendor is a trader a venture is a business enterprise vending is kind of selling all right so moving on into the next question practice question 4 we're going to have a look at a pre-listening activity right about a food festival imagine you are invited to an international food festival in the uk what would you expect to find at the festival? So we would find different types of food, croissants, bagels, um, different variety of maybe fruits, right? So international food festival, you could have other nationalities coming in and putting out food like pasta, maybe pizza, Italian, Spanish, right? Portuguese. Brazilian food, Sri Lankan food, Indian food, you could have a variety of different types of food, right? While listening, listen to a radio interview with a woman who has organized a food festival. Write a word or phrase in each gap to complete the text. So let's first read it. Sarah works for a local charity organization that gives poor children an opportunity to do what? Hari, aha gina indala me gaps wala te enno na vachana thamai api liya none. This year, Wish You Were Here has organized a good festival, sorry, a food festival to raise enough money to send blank children to Cornwall in the summer. They are hoping to attract a lot of visitors and they have already decided that if the food festival is popular, it will take place blank year. Okay? There is plenty to do and see at the festival. You can buy food from many blank and you don't need to break the bank because meals are inexpensive. Children are welcome and their meals only cost a certain amount. You can learn new skills at the festival too. A famous chef, not a chef, a chef, is going to teach festival goers how to cook blank. Organizers are hoping this will attract a lot of would-be chefs. Would-be means the ones who want to be a chef. Other events at the festival include face painting and a blank competition, which is open to participants from all age groups. Families will be especially pleased to see an area where children can blank. The food festival is on blank and it starts at 10 o'clock. There is parking space for around 200 cars and admission is blank amount. Okay? Right, so we are going to listen and we are going to listen twice. First time we are just going to listen, second time we are going to make notes as we listen. Hari, tim palaveni para api ahano vitrai devani para thamai api uttara liyanne. My next guest is Sarah Lee, who has come along today to tell us about a charity food festival that's going to take place next weekend in St Clement's Field in Upper Clayton. Welcome to the programme, Sarah. Thank you. It's great to be here. OK, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about the festival? It's a charity event, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's right. I work for a local charity called Wish You Were Here. We organise holidays for children who might not otherwise have a chance to go away. Families on low incomes or single parent families with child minding problems. We've organised this festival to raise money for a week long summer camp in Cornwall for 40 children. 
We hope to raise about £5,000 next weekend. This is the first time we've organised such an event, but if it's successful, we'll make it an annual event. So, what happens at a food festival, Sarah? Well, this festival has got something for everyone, no matter what your age. There are more than 50 food stands selling all kinds of dishes from around the world. We've got Afro-Caribbean food, Indian food, Italian pizzas, Spanish tapas. You name it, we've got it. (laughs) So people can buy food. But we're in a recession. Can people afford to go out to eat? Well, that's the good thing. All of the meals have a fixed price of £2. Children's portions are one fifty, And you can have a taste of the food first before you decide what to buy. Really? Well, you can't say fairer than that. What else have you got on the agenda, Sarah? We've got celebrity chef Ollie James. He's going to be sampling dishes and saying what he thinks of them. And he's going to be giving a masterclass on preparing and cooking fish and seafood. That's interesting. Ollie is an expert when it comes to fish. Exactly. We're hoping he'll draw the crowds. What else can people expect to find, Sarah? Well, we've got other cooking demonstrations and there's a food photography competition with prizes for different age groups. There are stands selling local produce, cheeses, honey, fruit and veg. There's face painting and a play area for the kids. It all sounds great, Sarah. So when is the festival? It's next Saturday. That's June the 13th. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and finishes at 7 o'clock in the evening. And it takes place in St Clement's Field in Upper Clayton. Is that right? Yes. Oh, and I should say that there is no admission charge, but as this is a charity event, we will be walking around with collection tins and we hope that visitors will be generous. Thank you, Sarah Lee from Wish You Were Here. Visitors can check our website at the end of the programme for a full calendar of festival events. Now, coming up in the next hour, we've got all the weather from the... Right, so me K over on to Uttaratika Ahinati, I was kind of signposting while it was being played, right, so that you can um, kind of listen carefully, so you know, this pointing it out, right, so hopefully you have now got an understanding what the audio is about, Hare, over on to podi understanding our kenne the audio eka, mokha gana the meya kata kare, ya kata kare, Food festival le ka gana, eki tiena devar, kaud enne, famous chef kene kenava, ea mono gana the kira denne anne, e event ke tiena tava devar, mono vada, ukada tiena competitions, mono vada face painting tiena, lama inta mono vada tiena, koma visera make a kiwa. Then up it tiena devani para hanagamang, make a answers tika, complete karan. Right? Right, so let's listen to the radio interview again. And this time, you need to make notes. My next guest is Sarah Lee, who has come along today to tell us about a charity food festival that's going to take place next weekend in St Clement's Field in Upper Clayton. Welcome to the programme, Sarah. Thank you. It's great to be here. OK, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about the festival? It's a charity event, isn't it? Uh, Yes, that's right. I work for a local charity called Wish You Were Here. We organise holidays for children who might not otherwise have a chance to go away. Families on low incomes or single parent families with child minding problems. We've organised this festival to raise money for a week long summer camp in Cornwall for 40 children. We hope to raise about £5,000 next weekend. This is the first time we've organised such an event But if it's successful, we'll make it an annual event. So, what happens at a food festival, Sarah? Well, this festival has got something for everyone, no matter what your age. There are more than 50 food stands selling all kinds of dishes from around the world. We've got Afro-Caribbean food, Indian food, Italian pizzas, Spanish tapas... You name it, we've got it. (laughs) So people can buy food. 
But we're in a recession. Can people afford to go out to eat? Well, that's the good thing. All of the meals have a fixed price of two pounds. Children's portions are one fifty, and you can have a taste of the food first before you decide what to buy. Really? Well, you can't say fairer than that. What else have you got on the agenda, Sarah? We've got celebrity chef Ollie James. He's going to be sampling dishes and saying what he thinks of them, and he's going to be giving a masterclass on preparing and cooking fish and seafood. That's interesting. Ollie is an expert when it comes to fish. Exactly. We're hoping he'll draw the crowds. What else can people expect to find, Sarah? Well, we've got other cooking demonstrations, and there's a food photography competition with prizes for different age groups. There are stands selling local produce: cheeses, honey, fruit, and veg. There's face painting and a play area for the kids. It all sounds great, Sarah. So when is the festival? It's next Saturday. That's June the thirteenth. It starts at ten o'clock in the morning and finishes at seven o'clock in the evening. And it takes place in St Clement's Field in Upper Clayton. Is that right? Yes. Oh, and I should say that there is no admission charge, but as this is a charity event, we will be walking around with collection tins, and we hope. That visitors will be generous. Thank you, Sarah Lee from Wish You Were Here. Visitors can check our website at the end of the program for a full calendar of festival events. Now, coming up in the next hour, we've got all the weather from the local. Right. So, Mama Lee singing a Karana Ga Mama. I have put down the answers, right? And you would have seen that I was underlining while I heard some of the key words. Right, listening. If I can go, you can't bala again. In the bed, you have to actively listen. Ah, again, you know, actively. All right, Harry. I'm going to watch the Mukhar the competition. Okay, so food photography competition. Okay, there's a play area for kids, so you know area where children can play. Play area for kids can an area where children can play. So you might not hear the same thing, but you do hear synonyms and the similar meaning. I've completed it now. Go away, kya ne travel. Okay, so opportunity to go away means to travel. Na to go away kya ne yana ne we yana va kya ne kya dhasa thama it's to travel. Okay. Wish you were here thama ya vada kena local charity organisation ne kya nama for forty children and it takes place. They are hoping to keep it as an annual event. Annual kya ne every year. So you can see. A वचन में है नहीं है, but you will definitely hear synonyms or similar words. You can buy food from about fifty-four food stands. Fifty-four के अंदर तो many के अंदर वचन था मैं में तो लकी हुए. So it's inexpensive. Usually it's about two pounds, but for children it's one fifty. Okay, and a famous chef is going to come in, and he is going to have. Um, a teaching lesson, okay, on how to prepare fish, uh, how to cook and prepare fish and seafood, right? The competition is going to be about food photography. It's held on Saturday, the thirteenth of June, and they said no admission is charged, okay, which means admission is free. So I think. You have got a good understanding. O gulon ta hadis yan sa kag misuna nang go back and play the audio again and listen to it and then complete the answers. Right. Moving on into the next question. It's about Easter. What do you know about Easter? What do you like to find out? So pre-listening. What do you know about Easter? Easter is celebrated by um, the Christians or the Catholics, right? And it has this really nice um, thing where you go and pick up chocolate Easter eggs, right? Um, what do you like to find out about? Maybe I'd like to find more information about Easter, why it's celebrated. Okay, we learnt it, so if you know it, good. Matka nangye lesson neking okay, right? So there would be different things that you would like to find out, but definitely it's about something to do with the chocolate eggs, and I love that kind of. Easter feeling, right? Okay. 
So you can jot down some ideas there. Now, while listening, watch the video about Easter and select the appropriate answer. Api deng balamu isela questions mona wadhe kiya la. Ito kota api ta answers pick up karana lesi. Which of these is a North American Easter tradition? The White House Easter egg roll, the White House Easter basket brunch, the Pentagon Easter egg hunt. Which of these animals is not associated with Easter? Rabbit, lamb, cow. Not associated? Okay. Animals. So is it singular or plural? Plural. Okay. For Christians, Easter is a celebration of Jesus Christ's resurrection, Jesus Christ's birth, the Hebrews released from slavery. Which one is it? In 325 AD, the Roman Emperor okay, ruled at with ruled that which one? Easter must fall on a Sunday, Easter must fall in April, Easter must fall in spring. What did he rule? He can determine kare mukad Easter. Why did Jesus and his apostles enter Jerusalem according to the New Testament? Right? Jesus and his apostles, right? A Jerusalem to enter according to the New Testament. So this is very um, religious kind of terminology, right? So if you're a Christian or a Catholic, you would know. If you're from another religion and you haven't read about that other religion, might be a little different, but good for you to learn some new vocab. Because when you read, right? So we'll not know, so start reading a bit. In the 16th century, Parents told children that if they behaved, right, what would happen? The Easter Bunny would climb down the chimney and leave them presents. The Easter Bunny would come and build a nest. The Easter Bunny would visit and lay colorful eggs. Which one did they talk about? Okay. First time, second time, answers. Right? So you would have picked up the answers while listening. questions So now what we are going to do is we are going to pick up on the answers. Right? It will be all over. So you have to remember and quickly go and mark the answers. keywords underline So you have to be, I always tell you, an active listener. See hearing in no you can't do listening. You have to concentrate when you are doing this. Right. So, let's watch the video for the second time. Now, this time, of course, uh, you won't watch it, but you will hear it. Hare api video ka balan neto, ahana gamang answers tika select karam. All right, let's go. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. Now, if you see this, it spoke about the White House Easter egg roll. Here, it was in two places that the rabbit and the lamb were associated. So I think even though it says plural, which of these animals, I think, which animal, we could kind of put rephrase it, which animal is not associated, the cow, because they didn't mention anything about the cow, but they did mention about the lamb and the rabbit for sure, okay? Next one, um, for Christians, Easter celebration is Jesus uh, Christ's resurrection. And Egolo rule out, they ruled out that Easter should fall on a Sunday, right? Uh, to observe the Passover and the final one that they would visit and lay colorful eggs, okay? So, Metana. If you're confused, please listen to it. Which of these animals uh, is not associated? I think we just need to kind of rephrase the entire question, okay? Where I would kind of rephrase the question and say, 
which animal is not associated with Easter. Okay, that would be much easier for you to understand because this also is incorrect. Okay, so which animal is not associated with Easter and the only one was cow? So the others are quite straightforward. Lacey Mogolonta, Terungan Pulo. In other question, again, you could have understood that then number uh, audio ekhe kia buna talking about the connection. E then e sathu then na kome the connect penne kia ne ke Easter wallet. All right. So let's move on into our last activity, which is about Valentine's Day. Okay, all of you know this. Um, it's the day where lovers celebrate. Okay, what do you know about Valentine's Day? Should it be celebrated? Well, I know that they exchange gifts and they love to exchange chocolates, red roses. Should it be celebrated? Um, Celebrate karano one kak deka. Some of you will say yes. I think yes, because you could kind of, you know, um, show that you love each other. But then again, you could say no, because you don't need a special day to show your love. I mean, if you love someone, you, irrespective of a special day, you could always show your gratitude, respect, and love. So it depends on how you want to answer the question. Thaman kemati uttere thaman te denna pulaan. Aadara vaan thinge dine api samaraan no o ne da nanta. Right? Samara kaayda kiya na pulaan o samaraan no ne. Mokada e da da was a special day ka keta goda special day val karahama. It's nice. Samara kaayda kiya na pulaan ne ka vashi ne hai. Mokada hamadama ki nekta aadara e nang you can kind of show it. Because I don't think my parents ever celebrated Valentine's, right? But I see now the younger generation so much into it. And they love to celebrate it, okay? So, right? So, moving on while listening. listen, Let's select the answers. But to do that, first let's have a look at the questions, right? What do we know about the origins of Valentine's Day? So, which ancient festival used to be celebrated in mid-February, okay? When was February 14 declared as St. Valentine's Day? Which Roman god is associated with modern Valentine's Day? Which of these statements about Valentine's Day cards is true? Okay. So just one. True or false or we don't know. There is more than one Saint Valentine. Is it true, false or something that we don't know, right? When did people begin to exchange Valentine's Day cards? When? True or false or we don't know. Um, Valentine's Day is less popular than it used to be. Again, true, false, or we don't know, Valentine's Day is only for romance. So, which one is it? Okay. Oops. All right. So, we have nine questions here. Let's have a look. Um, let's listen and try to pick up on the answers. All right. Palavini para piahano vitrai kissim de aklian nehe, Devani para tamaya piahana gamang, Uttaratika, jot down karani. All right, so let's listen to it and um, I'm just going to change this. This is question number two, guys, right? Okay, let's go. Valentine's Day celebrates love. It is a day to exchange flowers, candy, and greeting cards with your husband or wife or someone else you desire. It is a popular day to become engaged and to get married. Historians argue about the earliest roots of Valentine's Day. Many say it is linked to the ancient Roman festival of Lupercalia, which was observed on the 15th of February. 
that day celebrated the coming of spring and female fertility. Then, around 1,500 years ago, Christians supposedly began to celebrate the Feast of St. Valentine on February 14th. However, there are several St. Valentines and several stories about them. One involves Valentine of Turney, a Christian clergyman. He was said to have violated the orders of Roman Emperor Claudius II. Claudius was having trouble getting married men to serve as soldiers, so he banned marriage. Valentine considered the ban immoral and secretly married young Christian mothers anyway. When the emperor learned of the actions, he ordered Valentine's death. The execution is said to have happened on February 14th, around the year 300. Some people say this is the reason the holiday is linked to love. The exchange of valentines, or written expressions of love, began in the 1500s. The tradition remains popular today. Valentine cards usually include images of hearts, flowers, or Cupid, the Roman god of love and desire. The cards also often include poems. One Valentine from the year 1910 reads, When we meet, the flowers look brighter, and all on earth seems sweet. My heart is always lighter, my darling, when we meet. But Valentine's Day is not only for romance. It can also be a day to celebrate love of family and friends. All right. Then how can you the palavini para on the top? Then may para mama uttradan nehe, right? You will have to do it on your own. Okay. So I am going to play the audio the second time. You must listen and find the answers. Because all these lessons I have been doing it with you. Then Thaniya Mogolo Karan Nori. Right. Let's listen to the audio the second time. Mark the answers while you hear. Valentine's Day celebrates love. It is a day to exchange flowers, candy and greeting cards with your husband or wife or someone else you desire. It is a popular day to become engaged and to get married. Historians argue about the earliest roots of Valentine's Day. Many say it is linked to the ancient Roman festival of Lupercalia, which was observed on the 15th of February. That day celebrated the coming of spring and female fertility. Then, around 1,500 years ago, Christians supposedly began to celebrate the Feast of St. Valentine on February 14th. However, there are several St. Valentines and several stories about them. One involves Valentine of Turney, a Christian clergyman. He was said to have violated the orders of Roman Emperor Claudius II. Claudius was having trouble getting married men to serve as soldiers, so he banned marriage. Valentine considered the ban immoral and secretly married young Christian mothers anyway. When the emperor learned of the actions, he ordered Valentine's death. The execution is said to have happened on February 14th, 
around the year 300. Some people say this is the reason the holiday is linked to love. The exchange of Valentine's, or written expressions of love, began in the 1500s. The tradition remains popular today. Valentine cards usually include images of hearts, flowers, or Cupid, the Roman god of love and desire. The cards also often include poems. One Valentine from the year 1910 reads, When we meet, the flowers look brighter, and all on earth seems sweet. My heart is always lighter, my darling, when we meet. But Valentine's Day is not only for romance. It can also be a day to celebrate love of family and friends. All right, so hopefully you've jot down the answers, right? You better collect the answers, Hoela. Here are the answers for you, right? We know Valentine's Day contains elements of early religious festivals. So the ancient people used it to celebrate the festival of Lupercalia in mid-Feb, right? And it was declared um, St. Valentine's Day in the 15th century because it said around 1500 years ago. Um, here the correct answer is Cupid, right? And here the answer isn't given. However, Valentine's Day cards usually include pictures of Cupid, okay? So clearly they didn't tell exactly what it was, but um, which is true. They said that they would include pictures of Cupid. They didn't clearly say which, which ones, but they did say images and other things, right? So the answer is true because there is more than one saint. Um, 1500s is when they exchanged it. We don't know how popular. popular Methana answer is false. Mukada Adare Adaravantin ge dinaya pitarak neve yeka, right? Apihema ki water. It's to celebrate the love of friends and family. So it's about lovers as well, romance, but itamatarava paulithin adare yaluang adare bidahadagana davasakwena. All right. Okay, so I think with that we have come to the end of the lesson, right? Which was quite a lengthy lesson. But, mang hita no golon to then tika tika listening. Thera na ko humud karan no ne keywords underline karan no ne mono ad mang hagen in no ne, right? So samani man then the parak play karan because you are still in the intermediate level. Have a advanced tika tika hammer. We can play it once and listen to it once. All right. So with that, we come to the end of the listening lesson for the intermediate level, which was all about festivals and celebrations. Mm -hmm.